this is Carl Ackerman, host of History is Here to Help. And today we have two wonderful um, guests who were, um, that is uh, Cliff Shin and Hinda Diamond, who are here to discuss Palolo Valley stories. Mm -hmm. And um, we're not giving a definitive history here. Um, I'm not a historian, nor are my guests. But it's just some interesting facts about Palolo Valley and also to celebrate an upcoming event that will be taking place in Palolo. And of course, Palolo Valley was like many other valleys um, on Oahu, that is Mountain to Sea, Oahu, um, which had a nice irrigation and traditionally used for uh, taro growing. But, you know, in the last 200 years, there was a rock quarry there. There also were um, the dairy farms. And interestingly enough, uh, before schools like the elementary schools and specifically Jarrett Middle School were established, there was the Oahu Country Club with its golf course. <laughs> And that's where Jarrett Middle School actually um, uh, got its beginning. And uh, with no other uh, further ado, let me introduce our wonderful guests. And first, let me introduce uh, Cliff Shin, um, who is not only the president of the Jarrett Middle School Foundation and full of stories about Palolo Valley, uh, but also I was privileged to teach his children at one of the best schools, not only in Hawaii, but in America, at Iolani School. Um, and thank you for paying that tuition, which was much smaller than it is now, <laughs> Cliff. Lucky you. But um, anyway, it's my pleasure to introduce Cliff Shin. And Cliff, will you tell us a little bit about your background besides uh, uh, the fact that you were president of the um, uh, Jarrett Middle School Foundation? Well, I was very fortunate to grow up in, in Palolo Valley. I went to Kamike High School, then the University of Hawaii. And I worked for IBM for five years, and I started my own company, and I've been in business ever since. That's yeah. what, how great, and going from IBM to being self-employed, and I'm sure that means computer business, so uh, lucrative field, I'm sure. Um, and my next guest is um, Hinda Diamond. Um, I know if she is the vice president of the Jarrett Middle School Foundation, but um, you know, more importantly, I know that she spent many years in social work in Hawaii, and maybe she'll tell us a little about that. And of course, um, she is well known to many of us in Hawaii because both she and her husband were in charge of Temple Emmanuel, uh, her husband being the really, truly great and wonderful uh, rabbi, uh, Ken Aronowitz. Thank you, and Carl. That... Yes, thank you. Hi. Well, we go from lucrative to a social worker. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm Hinda Diamond. Hi, everybody. I grew up near Palolo. I grew up on St. Louis Heights. And now I live in the Valley, Palolo Valley. And I've gone to the University of Hawaii to get my bachelor's in social work. And then I got my master's in social work. And I worked for the last 40 years in social work, child abuse and neglect, and specifically at child welfare services here in Hawaii. So I retired as a supervisor after. 30, over 32 years with the state of Hawaii. And that led me to spend more time with the Jarrett Foundation, which we'll talk about in a little bit. You know, I should mention also that, you know, Hinda sent her children to a Jarrett Middle School. But going back yep. to Palolo Valley, mm -hmm. um, of course, this is the valley that has, uh, you know, a Chinese uh, home um, for the elderly um, in the back of the valley. And that's my connection, um, having spent many a day there. And of course, back in the valley, there's also one of the few public, well, not so much few and uh, much longer, but the K through 12 Hawaiian Immersion School, Anui Nui, um, which is also part of Palolo Valley. But let's 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 get some stories in here with these two uh, eloquent people. So, Cliff, tell us some of your stories about Palolo Valley. You having having been um, a local boy, uh, uh, like Hinde is a local girl um, in uh, Palolo. Well, Carl. Um... I moved to Palolo in 1951, and I used to live in Palama. And while I was living in Palama, all my neighbors deserted me because they were <laughs> getting ready to build the mayor right housing. So I grew up in a neighborhood that was very few families. There were no activities, and uh, to keep ourselves amused, we would go rat hunting. <laughs> that was the most interesting Thing we had in Palama. But then when I moved to um, Palolo, I was really surprised because what we had every Friday night were free movies and free popcorn. 
And I said to myself, wow, it looks like I went to heaven because we never had this before. I like to say that um, all my neighbors were really friendly. I remember one day I was walking outside my home and two young men, about my same age and height, came up to me and they looked me in the, in the eye and said, you want to fight? And I looked at them and I, I didn't recognize them. So I had no ill feelings toward them, but I said, sure, but I have to go deliver my newspapers. <laughs> um, so we agreed to meet at Palola Elementary School after I delivered my newspapers. Well, delivered my newspapers, met them at the school. We started fighting. It didn't last very long because I threw a left hook and I was lucky to land it on his <laughs> jaw. He fell to the ground looking for his, his lost tooth mm -hmm. and the fight was over. He got up, we shook hands and we went our separate ways. Um, we never mentioned the fight again. And I remember him being in my senior class in Kamiki High School. So I really like the community because they're very forgiving. Uh, they didn't care if you're poor or what nationality you were. They were just friendly. And I that's why I had this love for the Valley for a very long time. Well, Cliff, I'm going to follow up just with a question before we get to Hinda, and that is, where did you watch these movies and where did you <laughs> eat these popcorn? Uh, because, you know, I know that there's, you know, a wonderful pool and a wonderful park, but where in that dense valley, and the nice thing about Palolo for uh, our viewers is that, you know, the construction of houses is not, you know, like a track. There are very many different types of housing. And, you know, when housing was, you know, if you wanted to get a house in the 1950s, it was 11,000. And now anything in central Honolulu is about a million. So, um, but going back to the question, um, so, Cliff, where did you watch the movies? Where did you eat the popcorn? <laughs> well, you mentioned a golf course, and there was a golf course. And in the pavilion where they had dinners or whatever, that is where we had our, our movies and popcorn. And back then, we lived in Palolo housing, and what they have today are like mansions, because when we moved there, it was an army barracks. Mm -hmm. We had no windows. We only had screen, open screen. And, uh, but the community was very friendly. <laughs> that's, you know, that's wonderful. And that, you know, golf course will later become, I mean, part of uh, Jared Middle School, but it also uh, that, that Oahu, you know, um, uh, country club golf course, of course, will move to uh, Vineyard. And I'm uh, not to Vineyard, but to the Poly. And um, of course it was, you know, hoity-toity obviously, and uh, it will become um, a public housing. And there's been two major projects from what I understand um, in Palolo in terms of uh, great housing projects. Huh. Um, and uh, you know, I'll tell you a story later, Cliff, about, um, <laughs> uh, about uh, uh, public housing. But Hinda, now you not only lived in, live in, lived in and live in uh, Palolo <laughs> Valley, but your children went to school there. So how is it being, sort of a parent in, in Palolo Valley? I think it's wonderful. My, my kids, my family, we love Palolo. Going back to what you said, Carl, when we were looking for places to live, it was like a little secret. We didn't want many people to know about Palolo because you could live in town, but it was affordable. And I have a view of the ocean and Diamond Head right now, but we could afford it. Now, yeah, it's a lot different. We're talking about 20 years ago, but my kids, her, my daughter's best friend's house is 16 houses away. Literally, we counted. My son sounds kind of like how Cliff was when he was a young boy, a little Kolohi, and he has friends all around the valley. Everybody knows my son. And I'll tell you, the good thing about Palolo, which my kids don't necessarily like, is I say, the valley has eyes. Everybody sees what you do in the valley. <laughs> so the gas station lady tells me, oh, your son was in here getting an energy drink. Wasn't he supposed to be in school? I'm like, oh, good point. Okay, thank you. And that's the gas station lady. <laughs> you know. So it's a very small, wonderful community, tight-knit. Our neighbors, we all know each other. It's it's just like how Cliff said. It's It's very nice. I don't have a dog, but I borrow my neighbor's dog, who's my Hanai dog. And 
that helps me to meet even more neighbors as I go walking around the valley. Well, let me ask you both this, but I'll start with Hinda. Um, I have heard that, you know, that there, of course, uh, with, you know, the original um, uh, taro growing, um, mm -hmm. that there is a stream in Palolo, um, mm -hmm. and a stream um, that, you know, is, you know, fairly prominent and, of course, will empty into the Alawai and then into, you know, into Waikiki. But my question to you is, where is the stream? And do you see it often when you're hiking? I mean, I mm -hmm. uh, do some similar things when I hike in Manoa. And of course, I see Manoa Stream all over the place, sometimes going through the the, the backyards of uh, some of my friends. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Cliff, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll just answer. Palolo Valley has a wonderful, shouldn't be open to everybody hike in the back of the valley because it is quite dangerous. I myself, many years ago, like 30 or 40 years ago, had a helicopter ride by the fire department because I got seriously injured on a hike to the back of Palolo where there's a beautiful waterfall. There's a crater if you keep going up higher and the stream goes right through the valley. Actually, you mentioned a Nui Nui school, which used to be my old voting place, my old polling station. And I would take my kids and after we would go vote, we'd go into the stream and catch opihi or just go with our little fishing net. And that was trying to get them to learn civic duty of voting, but also have some fun in the stream. That sounds wonderful. Cliff, do you have uh, also stories about uh, the Palolo Valley stream? Yes, yes. Um, on the east side of um, Jared School, there was a stream and I spent many days there fishing for crayfish and mm -hmm. Jojos and um, um, swordtails. Um, it was a really nice stream, and uh, uh, I brought my friends, and we spent a lot of time and enjoyed our fishing there. Mm -hmm. That sounds that sounds absolutely wonderful. And you know, Hinda, because you and I both mentioned um, a new school, one of the interesting about the K through twelve Hawaiian immersion school is I understand the football team, or at least it's rumored, tells gives uh, signs and talks to one another in Hawaiian. That's uh, true. <laughs> which, which, you know, prevents anybody from stealing their signs and their and their conversation um, um, yeah. from each other playing football. Well, let's get to, since you both are very involved with one of the centers of Palolo Valley, and that's um, Jarrett Middle School. And of course, Hinda, we know that you had children um, mm -hmm. that went to Jarrett Middle School. So I'm going to ask Cliff this question. So tell us about your involvement um, in uh, Jarrett Middle School and also... You know, we do know, and I wanted to point out that, you know, even though um, there is housing, you know, public housing right across from the school, and that that would sometimes indicate that a scores may be lower at uh, Palolo. It turns out that Palolo is one of the mm -hmm. finest middle schools in all of Hawaii. And so, Cliff, that being said, and of course, the principal is Dr. Kubel, let's give him credit, um, and the faculty and staff, of course, but um, uh, Cliff, so how did you get involved? And I know now that you were president of the uh, Jarrett Middle School Foundation. Well, it all started many years ago when my nephew was going to that school and I wanted to help him. So I went to the school and I met the principal and the teachers and I thought, what could I do to help the students? So I came up, came up with an idea where I asked the teachers to pick a dozen students, but I asked them if, could, if they could in, include my nephew. Um, and they agreed. And what I did is I arranged a luncheon at Kahala um, Hilton for lunch, and I hired a limousine to come and pick them up. Now, my rationale was that if I was in school and I got to go to Kahala Hilton, <laughs> in a limousine, would that give me more incentive to study harder? And that's why I started that. <laughs> and after that, the school asked me, Clifford, could you come and uh, join us with the uh, SCBM, School Community Based Management? So they asked me to um, attend a meeting, I did. And after the meeting, they asked me if I could run the meeting um, the, the following month, I said I would, but I got real busy and I said, now who could be a good person to take my place? And so I waited until it was only two weeks before the meeting and I asked my wife, I said, Eileen, 
you know, I just can't make it. Can you sub for me? And she did. And she was so good that she was a president for the SCBM for 20 years. <laughs> wow. That's, <laughs> that's quite a story. And, you know, as part of this story, your wife, uh, I think, was in advancement at Iolani School. Isn't that correct? Yes, she worked there and she was um, she was a fun <laughs> development director. She there we go. Read. Yes, yes. And and of course that's important. Uh, before we switch over to Hinda now, um, uh, um, that's important because you know, um, Ilani School now has a direct relationship with um, Jarrett Middle School and with Palolo Valley because they recruit kids into the wonderful Kai program, which I think was seven years, but even expanding further where kids get summers at uh, Iolani and much, many other things. And during the pandemic, there were food drives, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, um, Iolani School is doing a, has a wonderful, wonderful uh, connection to uh, Palolo Valley and to Jared and to other schools. And also um, Sacred Hearts had a program called Ka Le Ike. And uh, they also have a connection. Um, I, I'm not sure they have started up yet again after the pandemic, but both those schools, Iolani and, um, mm -hmm. And Sacred Heart should be applauded. Okay, so moving over to Hinda. So, what do you do um, as a vice president working with um, um, Cliff in the um, uh, Middle School Foundation? And also, you know, what kind of events do you do? And I, I, I was privileged to work with you on one event where we were parking cars for one of the <laughs> lovely Buddhist temples. Well, we weren't parking; people were parking themselves. But we were just charging admission to that Jarrett School Middle School uh, parking lot. And that was a lot of fun. And uh, but I'm sure there are other kind of activities that you're doing to promote education in this wonderful Palolo Valley. So I'm going to let you talk yeah. now Hinda, about this, uh, about the events and the things that you're do uh, doing ongoing. Thank you. Well, being a parent, I went to one of the parent uh, orientations, I guess it was, and somebody, it might have even been Cliff at the time, got up and spoke about the foundation. And I'm the type of person that always likes to be involved with things and anything to help the students. So it sounded really good. So I've been with the foundation for a long time. I want to say it's the only middle school in Hawaii that has a foundation of a public school. And basically everything that we do is for the staff and students to better the school. And you're right, Carl, it's a school that has really good grades and good test scores because one of the things that our fearless leader, Principal Dr. Kuba, says to the kids is don't be ordinary, be extraordinary. And I love that. And that's really been fostered into the kids. And what we do as a foundation is we try and help in any way. So for instance, there's a challenger course that the sixth graders and the eighth graders go to out in Eva Beach and the foundation helps to pay for that. We help to pay for um, incentives for the students. You know, during the pandemic, the teachers worked really hard, extra hard, especially on video. So we were able to help the teachers with a little appreciation. The after school program, which is an amazing little secret, it's Kulia All Stars. Every year they put on, minus COVID, a musical. And so the foundation will help to pay for the rehearsal snacks, things like that. We've um, help with the eighth grade banquet at the end of the year. So we really are open to helping in whatever way the school might tell us they need help. The students might tell us we need help or we might offer suggestions. And then we do fundraising, yes. So uh, one of the things I um, uh, wanted to press you on, um, Hinda, because I was able to, I think you arranged um, for me to see one day um, mm. the play. Mm, and yes. um, I came to the school and, and there was a full uh, play um, being produced. And I'd, could you expand about that? Because I think that, you know, theater really, um, you know, we were mm -hmm. lucky enough to have Honolulu Theater for Youth. But what most people don't know is that um, there's a national Shakespeare Festival in New York. And um, there have been in the last 10 years, four local kids from Hawaii who have won this national festival put on by the English. Uh, that is, you know, from by the English that are that have a nonprofit here in the United States, and um, most recently it was won by at least last year by a woman from a young woman from St. Andrew's Priory, and so um, you know under the um, you know there's a uh, 
a wonderful head, head of school there called Ruth Fletcher. And she just does wonderful things at St. Andrew's Priory. Um, but so how do you think, how do you see the kids being impacted uh, by this theater program? The theater program, to be clear, is after school. So it's all voluntary. And let me tell you, right now, just so you know, current school year, there's 291 students, which is amazingly low. It's a small little school. There's 25 teachers. Everybody knows each other, like I said. And the free after school program, the focus is homework. But afterwards, they have all kinds of activities they can choose between cooking, arts and crafts, uh, computers, snacks they get as well. But the theater, which is all musicals, that's on top of everything else. So they might go to cooking, they might do their snacks, but the kids and a lot of involved parents are also sewing their costumes. They're making their background, um, using their art skills. They are practicing their lines, practicing their singing. And as a matter of fact, right now, they're getting just now starting the auditions for Lion King, which is going to be held at the end of the school year. So they basically spend from September all the way till May rehearsing. And this is on their own time. This is on weekends. This is wonderfully committed kids and wonderfully committed after school staff. It's the Kulia All-Stars, which is actually only in six middle schools in all of Hawaii. So Jarrett's really fortunate. And it impacts the kids in such amazing ways, their self-confidence, their ability to, to shine and, and be just like Dr. Kuba says, extraordinary. And they get standing ovations. It's, it's really amazing. It's great to see them just flourish. Well, it sounds like you have um, at Jarrett Middle School an extraordinary principal, and this question goes to Cliff. So how are you going to celebrate this man? I, I understand you're going to celebrate this man, so uh, how are you going to do that? We are, go we are planning um, uh, a, a foundation dinner on November 18th this year at the J Japanese Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we've contacted a lot of people, and um, Dr. Kuba was selected as the best um, middle school teacher in the whole state. Principal. And we, principal. And yeah. we didn't get to honor him because of, of COVID. So we're very excited. And uh, a lot of people are, are planning this wonderful event. So um, please let everybody know about our event and would love to have everybody come. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's and, November 18th. And where is it going to be, um, um, this, this uh, celebration of Dr. Kuba? At the Japanese Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Japanese. Japanese Cultural Center in Baratania. Yes. No, On the 18th know, of November. Know, like that old skit, you know, um, that Bill Cosby did about the Bible, you know, where he's talking to, talking to God, he's Noah, and something comes out of the air. I'm hearing things in the air <laughs> coming to you. Um, <laughs> um, much like much 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 like godlike from the side cliff it's really really wonderful you know and i you know having a wife and two daughters you know around me most of the time you know i kind of hear these things from, from the side and say okay what are they saying now but that's Cliff's anyway, fearless um, leader on. that's his wife <laughs> yes there we go there we go so um you know are there prices for these tickets and you know it's so wonderful that you're celebrating uh a DOE principal, because there's not much mm -hmm. of that in Hawaii. And I think there should be more of this. And, you know, and maybe, you know, Jared can be seen as the model, um, you know, middle school in Hawaii. So is, mm -hmm. I guess my question is, um, you know, um, are, are you expecting parents and are you expecting people from the community? And if someone wants to get a ticket, where do they go? I mean, to, to, mm -hmm. and, and how much is a ticket? I guess I, those are two questions. Who do you talk to and, and where do you it's, go? And yeah. It's open to the public. Anybody who's affiliated with Jared, it could be alumni, it could be parents, it could be families, or maybe not affiliated, but you just want to support. It's absolutely open. Everyone's welcome. It's $80 for a regular ticket, it's $65 for um, the staff. And we want to encourage the staff, of course. And everybody is welcome. Dr. Kuba has been involved with a lot of different DOE schools, Kalani, Alawai. Um, you name it, he's also been in the main office at DOE. So it's a fundraiser. So we hope to raise money to help the students and help the school. We also, if I can just interject, Give Aloha is next week. I mean, sorry, yeah, next week is September at Foodland. And we have, for the first time ever, 
share it as a organization that you can donate money through Give Aloha at the cashier. So you just tell the cashier 79130 or that you want to donate to Give Aloha to Jarrett Middle School Foundation. And that and our fundraiser dinner are going to be really good ways you can help the community support the school. That sounds wonderful. And it's great to you know support uh, public education, especially with mm -hmm. our wonderful superintendent, Keith Hayashi. Um, I, I want to also say, and I want to inspire another story from Cliff. And I know that you, did you say that you, you came to Palolo in 1951? Yes. And I think that Jarrett Middle School, of which you were the president of the foundation, didn't start until 1955, if I'm not mistaken. But so you were there even before this school that you're now sit as the president mm -hmm. of. But um, just to give you a brief story, then I'm going to ask you to, hopefully it'll inspire another story about uh, Palolo. Um, years and years ago, there uh, a friend of mine named Bill who uh, was passing by that institution called W and M, which used to be on 10th Street. Now it's right next to, you know, City uh -huh. Mill. Um, and uh, he always would buy French fries and a Coke. Uh -huh. And that at that time it, that cost a dime. And one day he forgot his money, got up there, and the people at W and M in the in really the Aloha spirit and the spirit that you have been describing about traditional uh -huh. Palolo. Um, just gave it to him and said, you know, I'm sure you'll pay me back. And sure enough, uh, my friend Bill went home to his house, got the dime after after school <laughs> and and uh, and paid them back. You know, he didn't want to miss his French fries and Coke. And that's a story that came to me recently. And I think it's wonderful. But Cliff, do you have any more stories like that about Palolo when you were uh, not beefing and uh, not eating popcorn and movie and <laughs> watching movies? Well, you know, it's too bad I'm too old because um, Jared wasn't built um, when I needed a good middle school. Um, so I, my neighbor and I used to walk all the way to Kamiki Intermediate. And so uh, it would have been so much easier if we had uh, our Jared Intermediate. I like to say that Jared got started because we also had way back then a wonderful principal Mr. Um, Asami. Mr. Asami was only five feet seven, about 140 pounds. And yet he's on the circle of honor from the University of Hawaii, where he played offensive guard. He was such a wonderful person. When I went there and I met him, um, the kids just loved him. So one day after we got started with SCBM, I walked into his office and I said, you know, Iolani and Punoho have foundations. Why can't Jared have a foundation also? And he looked me in the eye and he says, Clifford, you're right, let's do it. And a week later, we had our first luncheon. And right after that, everything started rolling. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Cliff, sorry. No. So uh, Jared has been blessed with so many great principals and Mr. Osami and Mr. Reed Kuba. <laughs> Just great example of that. Well, this show is now, we have run out of time. I wanted to thank you both, Cliff and Hinda, for your support of Palolo Valley and for the many stories. And, and also to include, you know, Betty White from Sacred Hearts, and of course, the wonderful Allison Blackingship, who has contributed so much uh, to Palolo Valley from uh -huh. Yolani School. Um, so thank you both. And um, I have thoroughly enjoyed this, and I hope you have too. Thank well, you. And contact the school if you have any questions or would like tickets for the foundation dinner. Well said. Thank you. Thank you, Carl.